thank you all for coming. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a quieter day than last year, where a huge gale was blowing and uh, I think hailstones came down, but it was very arctic, so uh, we all enjoyed it. Um, but today we have Graham Devon here to say a few words, um, and uh, after he's spoken, we've got a few readings from patrons who've uh, kindly uh, sent in paragraphs. Um, uh, Michael Palin's contribution we can't show because I've got no internet on my uh, here. So, but that will you can see that this evening. But it's it is on on our website. But Graham, thank you. Thank you, Andrew, and uh, I think it's a testament to the the longevity of this historical occasion and the John Ray Society that keep it alive and indeed spread well beyond these shores in Orkney. Uh, and I think that's a testament to the, to the respect with which we hold this great historic gentleman. So one welcome to you all here today. It is the allotted hour when we stand by the grave of one of Orkney's most famous sons. Born on this day 21 decades ago, the family home in Cleston and Orpa. Dr John Ray went on to become an accomplished surgeon who worked with the Hudson Bay Company and in doing so became an accomplished surveyor, an intrepid explorer. And through experiencing the severest of conditions, he went on to chart the lands and the seas in the extremes of the Northern Canada territories. John Ray's success was at least in part due to the stamina and the survives with skills he developed in Orkney during his upbringing. He was also a man of human interest, and in the course of his expeditions, he made contact with the local Inuit population, gleaming insight into the challenges he would have ahead. But also these locals gave him information that would lead him to discover the fate of the Franklin Exhibition Expedition, and crucially, the discover of the final link of the Northwest Passage now regularly navigated by 21st century seafarers. Society now recognises John Ray's very special place in history. That dedicated surgeon, intrepid explorer, and of course, an Arcadian. Mm. So it's very fitting that we remember today here, John Ray, the Freeman of Orkney, and in closing, I think it's no better testimony to recite previous convener's poem, which was written specifically for this occasion, and I think it's very fitting. Revere this day the grave of Ray, hail Orkney's Arctic hero, who ventured forth far west and north in climes far minus zero. On foot and sled, his travels led to charts and maps anew. He told them straight of others' fate and found that passage through. So shame on those whose untruths chose, whose power and position. By their deceits, his greatest feats did not get recognition. We have the proof and know the truth. And tell who are who can. Suffice to say, here lies John Ray, a great, great Orkney man. Yeah. What better fitting, not exactly a toast, but a recognition of John Ray. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And now we've have the readings. Bill, maybe you could start the proceedings. So let me hear from the Earl of Orkney, addressed to Andrew. Writing in Barbara Huck's Exploring the Fur Trade Routes of North America, Ken McGugan writes, John Ray revolutionized Arctic travel. 
He was the first European to fully adopt such Inuit techniques as icing sled runners and living primarily in igloos. The chief hunter of every expedition he led, Ray, by his own estimate, travelled 10,500 kilometres on foot and 10,700 kilometres in boats, surveying more than 2,800 kilometres of uncharted territory. He solved the two great mysteries of the 19th century exploration, discovering both the fate of the Franklin expedition and the final link in the Northwest Passage. Looking back over his achievements in 2023, on the 210th anniversary of Ray's birth, it's also remarkable to note that he left a very light footprint and how relevant he is after a summer of climate change disasters in Canada. We should aim to be in touch with our environment now, as he was then. Peter Sindon, the ninth Earl of Orkney, writing from Winnipeg in Canada. This is from Helene Grieve. Yes. We gather here today to remember and give thanks for John Ray. Born on this day, 30th September 1813, at the Hall of Clestrain in Orford. John was destined to be an explorer, honing his skills in and around the rugged shorelines near his home where the clear views out to the west fired his youthful imagination. His father was the Orkney agent for the Hudson's Bay Company, and all his young life, John had been alert to the sound of the cannon signaling the arrival in Stromness of the Hudson's Bay Company supply ships. Orkney men provided the largest complement of workers to make the crossing to Canada and were known for their resilience and determination. Keen to join them, it was in June 1833 that John, now a restless, energetic young ship's doctor, stood on the deck of a vessel as it sailed out of Stromness, out of Stromness Harbour, bound for Rupert's Land and the Hudson's Bay Company. Taking up the role of surgeon at the Moose Factory Post, on Hudson Bay, he soon fell in love with the unforgiving conditions and rugged landscape. He studied the ways of the local Cree Indians, gathering knowledge and skills from them as he explored the many uncharted territories of this vast new land of rivers and seas. He succeeded in proving the existence of a Northwest Passage across the Arctic from the Atlantic to the Pacific and searched for the ill-fated Franklin expedition, who were also searching for the passage. Information from the Inuit given to Ray showed that Franklin's men had all perished and the bodies showed signs of cannibalism. This report made Ray unpopular at the time and his many accomplishments were rather ignored. Despite those early challenges, we now, perhaps more than ever, appreciate all he was able to add to our understanding of the geography of the vast wilderness of Canada. He was one of Orkney's finest sons, and we are justifiably proud of him and his many achievements. You may have left this some time ago, John, but we think of you often, especially today on the 210th anniversary of your birth. Mm. I have a, a graveside <clears throat> reading from Ken Rubin. Uh, so he says, greetings all. Happy John Ray Day. <laughs> Wonderful to think of people gathered around the gravesite to mark this occasion. Next year will be the 25th anniversary of when the late Louis Kamal 
Kamukak, I placed a plaque beside the cairn John Ray built in 1854 on the coast of Botia Island Peninsula. Ray was marking his discovery of what would prove to be the final link in the first navigable Northwest Passage. Nothing is guaranteed in Arctic travel, but I hope to celebrate next year by revisiting that historic site while sailing into the Northwest Passage with Adventure Canada from August the 27th to September the 12th. If you have ever considered making the voyage, this might be the one to go on. So there you are, you can all, you know, your holidays next year. Um, in my forthcoming book, Searching for Franklin, New Answers to the Great Arctic Mystery, I devote a chapter to Ray and mention him elsewhere several times. I think often of Orkney and wish I could join you in raising a glass to John Ray, the greatest explorer of them all. So, that's it. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you.